Hello, and welcome to this interview with Wendy Bourne, one of our artists presently on display at the Alpha Art Gallery's current exhibition, Bonds Beyond Time. My name is John DeMarco, and together we will be going over some of Wendy's artistic process as well as the pieces that were graciously contributed to both our physical and online presentations. We're going to start off pretty simple. Wendy, how are you today? I'm good. Thanks for taking the time to do this, John. Of course. Thank you for taking the time to meet with me and schedule this interview. So how did you become interested in making art that depicts nature and life events? And are there places and people in your daily life that influence your work? I think like every artist, I'm always looking around my surroundings and um, nature and life events are two main influences and inspirations. Uh, as I go through life, um, I'm a teaching artist also. I work as a teacher. So as I work through um, my job at school or commute or ride around town, I'm always kind of looking uh, with the artistic eye for things I might want to draw and paint. Definitely. And that kind of goes into the next question. In part of your artist statement, you say that making art is a metaphor for life. What do you mean by that? And how does that manifest itself in your work? All I'm really saying with that simple statement, um, art is a metaphor for, for life, is that uh, as we go through life or as we create art, uh, it's just a process of trial and error, really. Um, and one idea will lead to the next. So if you can approach things with an exploratory kind of a sense, then um, it's just kind of a natural process that builds on itself. Yeah, that's definitely very interesting to learn that you have a, an exploratory approach within your process. So then what inspired you to choose acrylic as your medium? And do you feel that you can explore more effectively with acrylic than other mediums? Well, a lot of practical applications um, are considerations, really. It, it dries fast. You can paint light colors over dark ones. Uh, you can control the opacity and paint very thin with like a watercolor or, or very opaque. Um, and I especially love, um, well, two, I'll mention two companies Golden and uh, Guerrera, which is a company on the Lower East Side in New York City, and you're able to um, mix the paint uh, with a matte binder. They have all these different binders you can choose from. So I like a matte, a very matte kind of not reflective surface. Also interesting when you consider that you have a lot of texture in your work. I really enjoy the textured patterns in Erie Street especially, and I was just wondering what your process was when you were making the texture in Erie Street. Well, that kind of goes back to this exploratory process, because what I like to do, I have a few with me here, is just like spend some time creating um, textured backgrounds, and specifically with the Erie Street piece, um, there's actually something on my Instagram where you can see me painting the background that did become Erie Street. So like a, a wash uh, color ground and then a thicker application of um, acrylic paint. And for Erie Street in particular, as well as some other pieces, um, I literally used a sushi roller um, because it's got all those bamboo pieces lined up right next to each other. So when you drag it across the surface, you get all those beautiful kind of patterns. And if it's a different color underneath with a darker or lighter color painted on top, it, the, the ground that's a different color comes, comes through. That's really cool. So you say that you have a different process if it's a different color. So do different spires inspire you to use certain types of colors? And then how does that affect how you approach your technique? I'd say just as I'm showing these variety of, of pages to you right now, um, I'll, when I try to work from, from life and, and set up 
on, on site outside somewhere, I will take a variety of pages like this with me and um, just kind of go by instinct and say, huh, this feels like it should get painted on purple or this one feels like I like this kind of warmer ground to it. So it's uh, just a matter of carrying a lot of pieces around like this. Um, so I have a jumping off point, not just a white piece of paper. Interesting. And then as a certain inspiration for your works, there are sparse representation of people in your paintings. And in your paintings, the people appear to be wearing face masks. And was this in response to the pandemic? And how do you think the pandemic has influenced your work and your representation of people in your work? It's definitely a response to the pandemic. Um, I would carry my sketchbook around or these kinds of pieces of paper for the backgrounds and just you couldn't help but notice, you know, like the train station is empty or, you know, there's a restaurant with maybe one, one person in it or the picture um, Park Street. I drew that over a series of days from um, a, a, an aerial view. There's a there's a parking garage that looks down uh, so I could get that nice nice view. And there just were not very many people walking around. And uh, yes, the people who were walking around were wearing face masks. So just like being a, capturing a, a slice of time um, to, to show exactly that. That's really great that we got to learn more about your process, about how you find spaces in order to paint. And so where else do you draw inspiration from? And do you have any role models that you look up to as an artist? And if so, who or what and why do you feel inspired by them? I feel like I have a zillion role models or, you know, people that I admire as, as artists. Um, certainly, like, art historically speaking, people like um, Marc Chagall or um, Pierre Bonnard, who have uh, kind of a dreamy uh, sort of approach um, to both the color and the way they might represent um, a subject. Artists like Frida Kahlo. I love um, the surrealists like Max Ernst and um, uh, interesting woman uh, named Remedios Vero. Um, two summers ago, I read an amazing book called Ninth Street Women. And that was about the abstract expressionists. So people like Lee Krasner, who was married to Jackson Pollock, um, Grace Hartigan, Joan Mitchell, um, Helen Frankenthaler, who was an artist I noticed even when I was a little kid, going to museums with, with my mom and dad, you know, like staining the surface of, of, the, of the canvas. And then, yes, you know, people who are working now, um, and I'm working like right now in the summertime uh, to sort of jumpstart networking with, with artists who are working now um, and, and visit galleries and contemporary art spaces. Thank you. There seems to be a lot of people and places that you draw inspiration from. And it's great to hear that you look towards past artists as well as current artists to kind of inform your artist perspective. And I just want to go back to your use of landscapes in your art in a lot of your works presented at the gallery, there are beautiful landscapes. I was just curious what landscapes have inspired you as an artist and what motivates your painting of buildings? Um, I guess I'll, I'll sort of bridge the gap between historical art reference and somebody contemporary. Um, so, well, landscapes, there's uh, David Hockney, you know, he's famous for swimming pools but there's a wonderful documentary. It's called A Bigger Picture. And he's, he's working outside that, that very much inspired me to go, huh, let me go see if I can pack up my art supplies and also try working outside because that presents its own challenge. But I feel like you get something you know, immediate. 
um, when you're working directly from observation. And then um, I love the work at the Montclair Art Museum. There's a whole gallery devoted to George Innes who lived in uh, Montclair and, and worked and painted here in um, Montclair. Um, and then there was another question about um, buildings, was it? So I guess, again, it would just go back to um, walking around and noticing, like I'm literally looking for a good angle, like thinking about composition um, or, or the way the light falls or like the Erie Street painting was painted in such a way that the, the shadow of the building is on the is on the street in front. Um, and that was, I think that's a good example of what I'm talking about of like working on site. So I would set up and work and draw and paint on site and then take it home and work some more. Um, that's got that textured background. And while I was working on site, you know, the pandemic was happening and that single person went by on a skateboard with a mask on. Very fascinating. I find that Erie and Park Street, since they're both in Montclair, I'm just curious how the city of Montclair has inspired your works. And how do you think your impression of Montclair re is reflected in your art and in your depiction of the streets in Montclair? Well, it's such an artistic city. It's just, um, there's so many artists and, um, musicians that live here. We have the museum, we have Studio Montclair, um, and it's just also a very beautiful city to just I have lots of ideas in mind in terms of what more I, I could paint. And then being here during the pandemic as well, you know, being able to see how things sort of, sort of, they literally shut down and now they're starting to open back, back up again. So, um, and now my, my another thought is to do some pieces where um, like different times of day, like specifically night, nighttime pictures. It would be really cool to see the same street depicted at day, evening and night. And that progression of how a street changes throughout the course of a day. Right. It's just the natural series right there. That's like three or different seasons, you know, day and night. Definitely. And your focus on specific streets could be an interesting focus if you're working with specific times of day as well. And in Erie Street, Park Street, Forest Street, and Montclair, Bread and the Rain, they're all streets. And so are there certain streets that inspire you more than others? Or is it just like how you were saying in Erie Street before that you found a really good aerial view of the streets? And so you worked with that. Is it more about the street that inspires you or a street that just has a really good vantage point for you to paint from? I guess, I guess it's like any subject. Like if you ever see an artist setting up to paint something, they will usually often you know, go to one spot and sort of view it and go to another spot and view it and maybe go to three or four other spots and be like, oh, I like this angle. So like I guess I said before, I'm literally looking for a good angle, like some kind of interesting composition, something that's not just straight on or plunked down in the center. And then as, as I just go through life, riding my bike to the library or walking to mail a letter, I'm just kind of keep that in mind or take pictures on my, on my phone and like think, oh, like I probably have a hundred things I would like to get back to. Um, so it's just a matter of time to, to get to all that. Yeah, definitely. It's very important to find a perspective that you feel inspired to start your work in. And so then to go back to the idea of color scheme in Erie Street, Park Street, Montclair Bread, there are very distinct color schemes. And I was just curious what motivated the different types of colors in those paintings and what do those color schemes represent in your work? Well, I'm, I'm attracted to like very saturated colors. Uh, they're just fun, fun to work with. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a teaching artist. I, I teach at a middle school, so I teach color theory and that's sort of a 
reciprocal kinds of kind of thing. The more I think about how I can teach it, the more it, I kind of consider it more in, in my work as, as I'm creating different things. Um, Montclair in the Rain is like, you know, capturing this, this, this kind of a oppressive feeling of, you know, the pandemic is happening and it's raining and I'm just trying to get some groceries. Um, you know, it's just kind of a, you know, struggling through, through a difficult time. Um, specifically with uh, Forest Street, like I, I live on Forest Street and there again, I was looking for some place to, to set up and paint. Forest Street happens to be a dead end. So I, I literally took a cart full of art supplies and something to sit on and my easel, like a couple blocks from here to set up and paint on site over and over and over again. And with that one in particular, the color, I was just trying to push, push, push it. Like how full spectrum could I, could I make this picture and still have it work compositionally and, 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 and space-wise? Yeah, in Forest Street, I am entranced by the colors in that work. I love the juxtaposition of how bright the colors are in Forest Street versus the color representation in Montclair Bread. And I also really love the peacock in Forest Street. I think that the peacock is just so inspiring. And I just wanted to ask you what the significance of the peacock is and what does the peacock represent since it's the only representation of a living being? Yeah, uh, I, it's literally, I have a friend who lives in Illinois and she has a farm with a whole bunch of rescue animals and, um, you know, leave it to my friend Diane to have actually discovered peacocks who needed to be rescued. So she had sent me beautiful pictures of this amazing creature and um, more and more what I'm trying to do with my paintings um, is like bring different things together that aren't, you know, literally together. Um, I also have a background as an illustrator. So a lot of times it was just all about like gathering the reference that you needed and then making it work together in one cohesive image. And then I also thought, well, because I'm pushing the color of, you know, with the color theory, how, how colorful can I make this painting without it sort of falling apart? You know, what represents color more than um, a peacock? And then I'll just leave it to the viewer. Like everybody's free to, to read more into, into that. Like what, what does a peacock mean? And then, yeah, it's a lot of times, some, many times people will look at it and say, was the peacock really there? So that's kind of nice because it's like a mystery. Like, is there a peacock that lives on Forest Street? It's very, storybook. I could see a children's book about the peacock on Forest Street. It's very much a narrative in itself. And I think that the vibrant colors really is a very wonderful characteristic of your work. And I was just curious about your piece insight, because I feel it's such a departure from the other pieces that are presented in the exhibition. And I was just curious, what does it mean to you in this painting? Ah, well, I guess a couple of things. Thank you for mentioning um, like children's book illustrations, because I do, I have a background doing that as well. And so you're not the only person who will look at my painting and say, there seems to be a story or a narrative or it reminds me of children's books. Um, so I appreciate that comment. Thank you. Um, and then Insight uh, is part of uh, another sort of series. And you're right, it's a very different approach. For the beginning of that, I literally was doing things like letting shadows of leaves fall on the paper and like jumping, drawing that and working back and forth between um, imagery. Um, I, I do a very short meditation every morning. So I'll do like literally, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
to one one minute, two minute little drawing. So after a while of having this this um, journal, I thought, huh, there's some well, like some eyes were popping up and stuff like that. So I thought, well, could could this be also like source material for more abstract um, work? And and there again, it was also like creating some sort of texture background and then working some imagery back into it and also literally like looking out the window and where the, the tree is 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 growing um in terms of the eye again i guess I'd, I'd say it's similar to my comment about the peacock i mean it's called insight and it's sort of generally based on you know meditation type sketches so there's this idea of you know insight into yourself and insight into your your place in the world That makes sense. The piece does seem to be very introspective. And so it was interesting to hear how you used your inner thoughts and your meditations to guide your artistic representation in this work. And I think that that is clear that the inspiration of this piece is very different from the inspiration that you get from your other pieces. Um, just to go back to the detail in your more realistic pieces, there's a lot of great detail regarding natural scenery and life. In Forest Street, you said that it's the street that you live on. And so does it have any deeper meaning to you just besides being the street that you live? Do you have any memories associated with the place that guided your artistic vision? And do you think a personal connection to the street affected your depiction of the street? Yeah, I think um, it's always helpful for capturing something authentic if you know a subject well um so it doesn't really have any deep you know significant meaning or you know special symbolism but um just because it's the street that i live on i i know it very well um so when you can see something in, in your everyday life you know it's, it's like when when i would take it home to paint also from memory um it's, it's it's just that you know a subject well so it's uh easier to to paint <laughs> definitely you absorb it over time just by being in that environment and i am extremely fond of the tree in the center of forest street it is blue and purple and it's just so captivating to look at i am curious is it a real tree and why did you decide to paint it blue and purple yeah everything in there is uh just as i saw it from the vantage point that i set up and um i guess it was the tree actually that made me go wow this is you know it's a nice view it's a dead end street so no one would be like I wouldn't be in the way of anybody driving. Um, and it's just blue and purple because again, I'm just trying to push. It's after a while, it gets to be sort of a process of elimination. Like if the road is yellow and the shadow is red and some of the other trees are green, like what other colors are left? Okay, blue and purple. You know, it's, it's sort of like that, just an experiment to see um, how, how far I could could push the colors. I really enjoy how you utilize a full color palette in your works. It makes it feel very complete. And there's always a spot that has an interesting color that catches the eye. And I really appreciate that in that piece especially. I really appreciate you taking the time to 
have this interview today, Wendy. I don't have any more questions. However, if there's anything else that you'd like to add or anything else you might have thought of during the interview, anything that you're working on now or any shows you're going to be in soon, any lingering thoughts, just feel free to share. Well, thank you. I really appreciate Alpha Art um, taking the time to do this interview. Your, your preparation for it is, is outstanding. Um, uh, I think um, the place I'm going with my artwork is to keep pushing the boundaries between combining abstract imagery and things that I observed directly um, across time. Um, I noticed actually in putting together the work that, that I presented to Alpha, um, it's like the, the, the Forest Street painting was from 2018 and the other pieces are more recent. And I think partly because of the pandemic, uh, the whole color palette got darker, um, like still saturated colors, but darker. And I think it's, you know, as, as an artist, it's kind of interesting. It's sometimes you don't quite know what you're doing until you step back and, and get a bigger picture. So showing at Alpha um, helped me kind of get, get that bigger picture. Um, and I am just going to continue working from direct observation, memory, and imagination. And um, uh, my work is also part of um, a, a lovely group show currently at uh, West Orange Arts Council. There's a Black Lives Matter group show. So I have a couple um, portraits in that show. So it's, a, it's a very gratifying to know that my work is in uh, West Orange and also with uh, Alpha Art down in uh, New Brunswick at the same time. Once again, thank you, Wendy, so much for speaking with us today and sharing your insight into your creations. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate your interest. <laughs>